the Business Simplicity Podcast, where leaders share their most successful strategies and the failures that inspired them, so business owners and managers can avoid the suffering and reap the benefits. With your host, your host Chris Parker. And welcome back to the Business Simplicity Podcast. We're doing a special edition or a series of special editions that I will call the Sustainability Week. And I'm speaking with Vim Luberson, and this is not his first time on the podcast, um, because some time ago we, you know, after a different, uh, what we call a sustainability sprint, we had a chat about that. So um, let's get right into it, Vim. And can you answer two questions? And I know it's not polite to ask two questions at the same time, but can you explain a little bit about what you do and then just continue on and explain in your words, what is this thing called a sustainability sprint? Yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, it's good to be back. For the people who are regular visitors to this or listeners to this podcast, this is my third post- podcast already. Um, and um, the two questions, uh, I agree, it's a bit confused. The first uh, question was, uh, what do you do? Uh, well, basically, I do um, uh, two things. Uh, I, I'm running a B&B in uh, South Africa, quite close to Cape Town, a small B&B. And the other thing I do um, is uh, consulting. Uh, I'm working as an independent consultant on uh, well, helping, helping companies. And one of the things I help them with is uh, sustainability. And I'm doing that together with uh, Chris and Jessica and, and Simon. Uh, great team. And uh, uh, the sustainability sprint is something we offer to, to, uh, to companies who are uh, working on sustainability and who isn't working on sustainability at the moment. So um, what, we, um, what we help them with is to uh, convert their ambitions and their goal, longer term goal, into concrete actions and to, def- to, to, to help them to define a, a, an agenda um, consisting of concrete actions, priorities, steps they, uh, they, they have to make to achieve that goal that they have once, uh, once defined. So uh, these are the th- two things I do at the moment. And we just finished a, and it's five half days in the sustainability sprint, and we did it with, with Destiny. It's uh, the organization that I work with in, during my day job. Um, and I'm just curious, looking back at those, those five half days, working with that group of amazing people, what are just the, the highlights or what did you love most about that journey? Well, what 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 I loved about it, it it was it was um, for Destiny's uh, IT uh, department, and what I loved about it was that we started uh, of quite um, let's say more data driven, quite technical, and what we managed, I think, was to open up their um, their um, yeah their mindset that. Uh, sustainability is somewhere so much more than just uh, data and, and and information and technology and you can do everything when it when it comes to sustainability so we opened up the world i think and uh, that wasn't not just what we did it was also uh, largely thankful to the effort of a lot of uh, of or, or, or a couple of inspirational speakers we we invited to make it more lively and, and what we also did and that was uh, that was one of the highlights for me was uh, inviting some of their suppliers, some of their competitors even, to tell a bit more about what they did sustainability-wise. And that also uh, made a penny drop with them that they had to make steps, but also at some other areas that they, that they already made steps. So that was, uh, that was, uh, that was one of the highlights. Um, the, the, the last day we, because um, we're talking about five workshops and each of these workshops are uh, taking half a day and and we're building it up so at the end of the five workshops uh, we asked the group to present it to executives and in this case we're talking about the ceo the cfo and someone who's responsible for sustainability and the main investor and uh, that's always a highlight not not only in this case but also in in, in other projects we did uh, because it builds up the tension and uh, it's also they only have 20 minutes to come up with uh, what they're going to do sustainability wise. Uh, so that was the other highlight. And 
And what made it really special was that they got so much support from uh, from uh, the people they presented to. And uh, that also made them feel really appreciated and really thankful for uh, all that support that they got. And I think they are really motivated now to to take it further and to just to do it. I'm curious if you put yourself in, in the shoes of one of the participants. Um, um, how, how, how do you imagine they experienced those five half days? Like what was the intellectual and emotional journey that they went through? Well, I think, I think every, everyone has its own definition of sustainability. And um, I think that they all started with that own, that own definition and that own mindset around sustainability. Um, and that um, they felt that they were coming together um, along the way. And um, the, the other thing I, I expect, I didn't ask them, but, but I, I saw sometimes that they were a bit confused. And that's also part of the design of the program that we sort of shake up people. Uh, it's, it's not always obvious for them why they do certain parts of the program or why they do certain things we ask them. But then in the end, they see it coming together. So uh, that's the second uh, feeling I got that, uh, that uh, they, they got from confusion to, to, towards direction during the five days. Yeah, and um, um, yeah, I, th I think, and, and also from, from the feedback, you can see that, uh, that, uh, that they, they made steps and they also started to believe in it, that destiny can, can make giant steps uh, in, in this regard. Yeah, what I found really interesting was the confidence scores, meaning, meaning um, because one of the missions or the objectives of, of a sustainability sprint is to increase confidence that, that, that they're able to take steps. And, and in this case, the, the destiny group was already, already pretty confident about their, their starting point on day one and then um, came out in, in a couple of places even, even much more confident. Um, and, and particularly around, I think, the milestones because there was a lot of actions going on, but I, I think they, they crafted it into some, some more, because uh, there's a lot going on already, but and they found a lot more things they could do, but then craft it into, into some milestones. And that seemed to really increase confidence. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. I, 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 was, I was a bit nervous about that confidence score because we, uh, we asked them uh, at the end of the first day what their confidence score was. And that was already pretty high, something I think average wise 7.3 or so. So at the, at the last day we asked them again, and I thought, oh, what are we going to do when it's now dropped to 6.8 or so? But that didn't yeah. happen. I think yeah. the, the effort was 8.2 or something, quite high also compared to other uh, companies we did. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we asked them their confidence on, um, you know, to score, I guess, one to 10 on the 15 you know, business areas, uh, you know, inspired by the simplicity scan, but we've ported that to the sustainability scan. So each of these 15 business areas has taken a particular dimension around sustainability. And we asked them to score all, 15 of those and so so we're, we're not only getting this one big chunky number but we're, we're it's pretty refined um, yeah. yeah yeah and 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 what you also see when you when you look at the confidence scores of these of these 15 areas is where an, an organization feels typically more confident uh, comfortable with like uh like actions i think they they scored pretty high because it's 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 a company that's really action uh, orientated uh, while you saw at the client or purpose part that the confidence started low and kept low and stayed low. Mm. So uh, I think it also gives a sort of good, good depiction of what, what they feel comfortable with. Yeah. And as a coach, when we're going through um, these, these different days of the sprint, was there a point where you were particularly nervous or, or, or unsure about how things were, you know, because you just mentioned you were a bit nervous about because they already started out pretty confident around this this topic going in. Um, yeah. Was there was there in a moment that you were like itching in your seat a little bit of like yeah you know? Well, what's what, there? Yeah, I was also what, it, it, not really nervous, but more excited. What's really nervous is uh, oh, what, what's really special always is, is day three when we are going to st start talking about opportunities, and uh, we ask people to come up with all kinds of opportunities to improve sustainability in in an organization. And uh, day two, uh, day one and two are more or less uh, about the current the current situation. And uh, and uh, you always uh, hope, and that's that's what makes it makes it exciting that people 
start brainstorming and you never know what's going to happen. But in this case, I think they came up with something like 185 ideas or so. So it started to flow. So um, uh, that, that, that was... Uh, that was one of the most exciting, let's say, uh, uh, parts of the whole program for me. Yeah, yeah. And then day four, when they had to confront a, a customer with their with their ideas, that's also that was also nice. Uh, in this case, we we didn't we didn't have a customer, but more a, a sort of a supplier for uh, Destiny. And what made that interesting was that that supplier was already so so. Uh, I don't know if it's far ahead, but they they did so much sustainability wise and also in a, a quite practical way. So that's also inspired them uh, really, I think. Yeah. yeah. So looking looking forward with the sustainability sprint. Um, uh, again, I'll, I've got two questions, but I'll ask I'll, I'll tell you the questions and I'll ask the first one was is who do you think the sustainability sprint is perfect for? And we'll wrestle with that a little bit. And then um, what are some common next steps that, that a group of people, a team or a company that, that goes through the sustainability sprint, what does this set them up perfectly for? So in your mind, who, who would be the, 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 the perfect group? And, and I thought this Destiny group team was, was pretty, pretty perfect with their personalities and, and desire, yeah. just inherent desire for sustainability and, and their enthusiasm already. Um, who do you think the, the perfect group of people are to to benefit from the sustainability sprint um i, I think it's 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 more a mix of, uh, a mix of people uh, part of them are dreamers or part of them are doers data oriented and um if you, if you bring them together you see that the part of the, the people who are really practical and, and and just doers they start to dream and and also the other way around because when you ask me about some sort of motto for uh, what we do uh, I said, well, sustainability is driven by dreams, but based on facts. And that's also what we try to include in the program, where we have uh, inspiring stories from com from companies, from speakers. So uh, we, we try to, to stimulate that dreaming. But at the same time, we also try to bring in facts, uh, uh, because in the end, it's also about what's your C uh, for CO2 emission at the moment and where do you want to be in the end. So um, uh, th that's about let's say the, the mix of the team um, in an organization. I think what the typical organization would be what th that should be interested in the sprint is an organization that set goals, like in 2030, we want to be uh, carbon neutral, but they they haven't done anything or they don't know exactly what to do, what they need to do to get there. And uh, you know what's easy at the moment, uh, everyone's defining sustainability goals, but uh, it's also far away. And uh, people think, well, maybe till the, at, at that time people have forgotten about it, or uh, we'll see what we do. But it starts now, I think. So, so um, that's that's more of the type of companies that should should be interested in, in in the sprint because that really helps you to make the first steps towards that twenty thirty or whatever you define. Yeah, it, I, 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 it, like in the Destiny case, there was already a lot going on. And um, in this case, this was the, the, you know, the global infrastructure team. And it was, what I saw is, is they, were, they were coming together on it. So there was, there was some alignment happening and there was some, yeah. some, 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 some connections across you know, even different sub-functions. Um, and it was more of a, an aligning, clarifying, um, maybe you know, obviously confidence building, like, oh, hey, you know, if, if we, if we if we do this with a bit more structure and if we, if we bring this more diligently into our roadmaps and plans and investment plans, um, then we can make some, even more impact than what we're doing already. So there was sort of yeah. this acceleration of thought going on, yeah. building on what was, what was happening anyway. So, and, yeah. and, then, and what, what also helped in that respect was uh, that people came from different parts of, uh, of, of the company, also from different countries. And you saw like Destiny is built up from uh, some, from several acquisitions, and you see that some of the acquisitions did, have done more already on sustainability than others. So that also uh, sort of uh, helped help they helped each other to 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 grow it together and to inspire each other. That was nice. One of the, the homework we gave before the, the the session three was was go you know talk to people back in your 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 origin place of origin, your or your legacy company or whatever, and yeah. and, and and come back with. You know, a lot of examples of what's already happening, 
And yeah. then the reason we asked that was because um, maybe a sister company hadn't thought of that already or, or didn't realize that was possible or hadn't, you know, so we were actually just sort of mixing it all together into that, into that day three brainstorm yeah. pot, which was quite exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And what, what, um, what, what are logical next steps? So if, if an, a group of people um, invest five half days and, and they come out with a, a, a one page uh, sustainability strategy for that function and, and a, a, a list, a long list of prioritized um, actions and, you know, tied to, to impact. Uh, what are some logical next steps that that group of people can embark on after a sprint to bring mm. it alive? Well, the main, the main things are, I think two things. The first one is, is uh, creating awareness, spread the word, uh, make, make, Make sure that other people also know what you did in, in Brussels for these uh, for that uh, for, for those five days. So um, that's the, the the more communication people oriented part. The other thing is that uh, now we uh, we are there or they are there with uh, 180 opportunities in four groups, and there really needs work to be done on that one. Um, get the data on on uh, on. on emissions where are you now where do you want to be create governance uh, governance uh, who to report to about uh, progress you made in on, on sustainability uh just defining what you want to do um but but having said that especially the the the, the second group you have to be careful that you don't get lost and you don't get swamped in data because you can work two day two years on data uh, where are we now without any making any progress um, so th these two things, I think, hand in hand, should be uh, will be important. Um, and if you create awareness and you make people ask where you are, that also helps you, I think, not to go too detailed and too deep. So that also helps you to make progress. Yeah, and and uh, and also like like a company in Desti, very market oriented. Make sure that your customers know about it, that you are working on sustainability show them that you can help them to achieve their sustainability plans because that's also quite 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 important i think in terms of market value in the in this market we also uh, checked out what uh, what what the big companies are doing in this market which is um, and and we saw that um, the maturity isn't that widespread so i think destiny can make a difference competitive wise so that's the other thing that i think it's important to work on yeah, it's, it's um, it was uh, for me. It was a great experience. It was it was um, again in in, in, a, in a structured process, five half days. So it's not a huge investment, but it is an investment. You know, it's like ten people with a couple coaches um, going through a, a, a deliberately designed process to to get them to understand what they're doing now, um, what their current state is on this topic, and then sort of explode it into in, into opportunities, and then craft it down to a, a very tight description that they have to um on day four sort of pitch to a customer or, or, or someone representing the customers and get, a, get basically get given a hard time and then um and then present to the executives and then and then and then get some 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 commitments on next steps it was uh it was brilliant so um maybe just let us know a little bit vim in, in closing um looping back to you to the to the other thing you do um uh, in South Africa, uh, when you're not being a consultant, can you can you give us a little? Uh, can, how, how do you connect these worlds? Meaning, you're you're, you're consulting and sustainability with with running a, a bed and breakfast in South Africa. Well, what 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 uh, what uh, what uh, funny about it is that uh, I, I, someone asked me what to do you like most, and I both I, I both like it, and especially the mix between the two. I told you yesterday I was working on the sprinkler installation. We had a massive leak. And while I'm fixing that leak, I'm thinking about uh, what that entry entry port for uh, for Destiny should do, uh, should look like. And uh, I now notice because I used to work for eighty hours a, a week uh, as a consultant, and at that time it, it, it you didn't have time to think; you only had time to to do. And I think just a mix of doing things and 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 thinking makes it really special at the moment. And uh, today today is an exciting day because we were closed this winter. And winter in South Africa is is, is um, has now just ended, so we had our first guest uh, this morning, which was nice to be back uh, back at breakfast and uh, 
back uh, behind the stove. And we also had to, we have new staff, so we uh, I'm training the new staff and everything. So uh, yeah, it both uh, makes me smile and uh, yeah. Well, in the show notes, um, Vim, if you agree, we'll, we'll put the link to your Airbnb and uh, so sure. if anyone's, you know, going through South Africa and I love it, you know, maybe, you know, maybe this is a, 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 a benefit of, of COVID times, the fact that we're able to collaborate and work again together at a distance, even though you were over in the Netherlands uh, not long ago and it was marvelous to see you in person, but that we can actually just create all this value and, and have all this fun together. It's, lo it's lovely. I, I will also put in the show notes um, a link to Cuba, the agency that, that we're, we're working with um, on the sustainability sprint to that sustainability sprint page. So people want to learn more about that. But in any case, um, BIM's LinkedIn will be on the show notes as well. Feel free to reach out directly to him on, on this or anything else. So Vim, uh, thank you so much for joining. Thanks, Chris. Pleasure. Thank you for listening. Download the Simplicity Toolkit from ebullient.com to discover the power of the Simplicity Scan and Sprint. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the podcast on your favorite player.